Hi, card making friends. Welcome back. It's Sandy here. And today I'm going to share three different things you can do with better press plates. You can emboss, you can hot foil, and you can better press ink. You can also heat emboss, but I'm going to save that for another video. I'm also creating with the new Pressed Posies collection from Spellbinders, and here's just a quick breakdown of what's in the release. The Timeless Blooms Wax Seal, the Sealed Floral Pressed Plate, the Sealed Cord, and the Faux Seal Sentiments. Next, we have a Friend Like You Bouquet Press Plate. This is a very large one, and it's quite lovely. It has a couple little sentiments that go with it as well. Love the size. Next, Cosmo's Backdrop Press Plate. I'm going to be using this a lot in today's video, and there is a coordinating stencil that goes along with this, but I'm going to show you a couple of different things you can do with it. Next, my all-time favorite, Flower Stems Press Plate with matching dies. I'm so excited about these. I had so much fun playing with them too. And another good one, You Are Everything Sentiments Press and Dies. So we can press them, we can hot foil them, and then we can cut them out all at once. Gotta love that. I'm going to start out with the Cosmos background press plate. I'm just getting it out of its package and we are going to have a little fun with this one. Okay, so I'm just showing you that it comes on a clear mat that I like to stick back on and put back in. So I'm showing you here that the top of my Bitter Plus is quite dirty and you can use Ranger's Archival Ink Cleaner to clean it. Um, I don't really care, as you can tell. The, you get some shims that comes with your better press and we're going to be doing uh, some embossing today so you need to pick up that dirty gray top mat and pop them underneath and I've also put an extra piece of cardstock in there and as you can see I have placed a piece of cardstock over top and I'm running it through my Platinum 6. I'm doing it a couple of times and this is uh, Spellbinders cardstock. I wanted to see if it embossed. And it did, but it's not great. So I'm going to try again. This time I'm going to use the Better Press cotton paper. Uh, this stuff is lovely. It's nice and thick. Sorry about my camera. There's too much white in there for my camera right now. Uh, I'm going to take the tape off and I'm putting the tape on the back because I'm trying to emboss the entire surface. So I don't want little tape marks in the corner as you would normally uh, hook your paper up to the lid. Okay, I'm bringing my machine in again. I'm going to add a couple of shims to the top of it. Uh, one is cardstock and one is just um, regular cardstock paper. Okay, running this back and forth a couple of times. And I'm happy to report that the results are good. You just need a couple of extra shims because the reason for this is the better press plates are a little bit thinner than the other plates such as the uh, hot foil plates that come from Spellbinders. So play around with your shims. Next, we're going to hot foil. So I've got my glimmer heating up. I've got my gold foil down. And I'm going to be using a four and a quarter by five and a half piece of Hammer Mill white cardstock. Everybody says, which Hammer Mill, Sandy? It's the one with the lizard on the front of it. The extra white, um, and I think it's a hundred pound. I'll link it for you underneath this video and in the comments over on my blog. Again, I'm adding two extra shims. One is cardstock and one is actually cardboard. Running it through my Platinum 6. You only want to run this through once just in case they bounce. You don't want a second set of uh, print showing up. Look at that beautiful foil job. Lovely, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so that little piece of foil that we just did, I don't want to throw that out. You can reverse foil. So we've got these lovely solid plates and these are from Spellbinders. Again, I will link them underneath the video. And you do exactly the same thing. You put that piece of foil down that you just used. Another piece of hammer mill on top. And then I'm going to add my cover plates with my shims. And I'm going to run it through the Platinum 6. Again, just once, and go slow with this one because it's solid, so you're transferring a lot of foil. Okay, pull it back, peel that off, and you get a beautiful foiled background. 
absolutely stunning. I really, really, really enjoyed working with this Cosmo plate. There's so many things you can do with it. Okay, so we're going to do some inking with the Better Plus. So you want to take out those extra pieces that you put underneath that gray mat because we're back to just doing regular normal things. And so I'm using a piece of the Better Press white cotton cardstock. I'm using the black Better Press ink. And this is especially made by Ranger for Spellbinders for doing the Better Press. And you want to, when you're dabbing it up and down, just twist it a tiny, tiny little bit. I find that it really helps to ink it up evenly. Okay, so moving that out of the way, putting my plate back on top, running it through my Platinum 6. And I go both ways, making sure that I get lots of ink coverage. Pick it up, and there is a beautiful black and white. Okay, again, you can clean this with the Ranger Archival Ink Cleaner. And I have this cool new sponge from Spellbinders. They just came out with these. They're very cool. Okay, now we're going to play with my favorite new product, the Flower Stem Press Plate and Dies. These are awesome. I'm going to start by making a background for kind of a masculine card I have in mind. And again, I want to ink the whole surface. So I'm making a little circle out of some of the tape and putting it on the back so that it holds my paper for me. This time I'm inking up in tawny brown. And I'm going to stamp that onto craft colored cardstock or uh, in Spellbinders World, Portobello. Okay, again, running it through my Platinum 6. And you get the coolest background. Okay, flipping that off. Okay, I'm going to be using that. While we have all the dirty out, I'm going to do some more. I'm going to do all of these flowers with the black ink, and we're going to be coloring them for a couple of cards. And so I'm showing you all these different techniques, and then at the end of the technique section, I actually put all the cards together. So uh, don't run away. Watch till the end, and you'll see the final putting all the cards together and how I pieced it all and colored it. Okay, so we've got a few different, I think there's four or five different posies, and then there's a couple of nice leaf. Okay, so I need to color this one. I want to do it in kind of a sepia, so I'm using some Tombow markers, and I'm just going to show you a couple of the petals because I color this whole thing exactly the same way. Flood it with a light color, bring in the dark color, then come back and blend it with the light color. And it goes all the way around, even the leaves, everything's done in these colors. Then I used a couple of grays to add to the center. And then I used the lovely dyes to cut this out. And again, we will finish this card a little bit later. Didn't that turn out pretty? For these next few images, I'm going to be using the Distressed Watercolor Pencils from Tim Holtz and Ranger. I love these things. So you have a couple of ways that you can color with these. You can scribble the color on and then spread it out with a water brush. I actually like to pick up the color with the water brush. You get a lighter color and it blends a lot easier. So that's a technique that I like to use with them. Um, I guess it depends on the situation. Uh, these are nice, small, delicate flowers, so I like the lighter colors, and it's easier to color them this way. Okay, so I'm just finishing up on those, and then we are going to add all of the coordinating dies, yippee! And we're going to cut out all of these pieces. Aren't they awesome? There were so many ideas that came to my mind when I saw this. All right, we're going to hot foil the sentiment set. This is the You Are Everything Sentiments Press and Dies. I used white foil, and look at that. Now I'm going to add the die over top, run it once through the machine, and I end up with all of these sentiments to use on my cards. And I had leftovers, which is very cool. So here's my card base for my brown card. As you can see, I matted it onto black and added some thread, some twine. Uh, I'll give you all the instructions over on my blog with all the measurements and the cutting instructions. And you just add the flower and the sentiment. Next, we're going to use the coordinating stencil that goes with the Cosmos background press. And I'm using a bunch of colors from Pink Fresh. For the pinks, I'm using Sparkling Rose and Raspberry Bliss. And I'm just, I'm shortening this so that it doesn't take us 25 minutes to do this. All of these stenciled are numbered. So you start from number one in the bottom left-hand corner and work your way up, okay? So the second color is the raspberry. 
and here's stencil number two. You want to just pop that down. I'm using a waffle flower mat to hold everything down. Love these things. Okay, and a whole bunch of blending brushes. Raspberry Bliss is the darker color. Okay, Sparkling Rose is the light one. Raspberry Bliss is the darker one. Love these colors. Woo! I'm into retro colors these days, in case you can't tell, because now we're going to put Aquamarine and Tidal Pool for the leaves. But first, we're going to do the centers, and I'm using Rocky Slope and Licorice. So for the base, I use the lighter color, and I blend that in with a blending brush. And then I'm coming back with a little, little tiny brush, and I'm going to shadow with the licorice just on the left-hand side of each of the centers. That'll add a little bit of depth to the picture when I'm finished. Okay, and then peel that off. Now we're ready for the next stencil, and we're going to be going to the leaves. So we're starting with aquamarine. That is the lighter of the two colors. And you would have put a nice coat down. And then before you remove the stencil, get out the tidal pool and add a little bit of the dark color where the leaves are kind of up close to uh, the petals. That adds a little bit of uh, depth as well. Now I'm putting the next stencil on and this does the other half of the leaves and we're going to be doing those in the tidal pool. Again, the darker of the turquoises. Peel that off. I like it. Okay. I could have left this alone, but I didn't. I decided I wanted a colored background. So I'm coming back in with a uh, Copic marker. This is BG11, and I colored the whole background, as you can see here. And what's a card without a little bit of splatter? So I used some white acrylic paint to do my first layer of splatter, and then I came back in with the Gansa Tambi, and I used the gold. Okay, these are the gem colors. I use these a lot, and they're inexpensive. They're a great little thing to have. One of these packages I've had for six years and I'm, I'm still not used it up. On to some finished cards. Here's my brown one and I'm showing you which of the dies that I used. Here is the second one and this used the Cosmo plate. So basic card with the pretty sentiments. For card number three, the Press Posies, I did this one in some pretty peach colors. I used the Dahlia cardstock from Spellbinder. I put that white embossed piece in the background and I used the essential arches to die cut it. Okay, these right here. And then finally, I used some two-tone pink dimensional dots. These are new from Spellbinders. They just sent them to me to play with them. And we're going to use the seal to put together the fourth card. So this is the Timeless Blooms Wax Seal. I'm going to be using some pretty purple wax. And I'm using my wax kit, pouring it out onto my little seal mat, and then popping my seal into it. While that's drying, I'm going to wipe the wax out of my little spoon. I like to do that when it's hot. And you want to fold that paper towel in half because that spoon's really hot. <laughs> Okay, so we're waiting for this to dry, and I usually count to about 15 seconds um, for the wax to cool off, and then I kind of push on the handle a little bit to see if it releases easily, and if it does, then I know that it's ready to go. There we go, and then gently peel it off, and I'm going to use my gold paint pen, and if you just rub it over top, the detail is highlighted, which is a nice pretty addition. And it goes beautifully with my little flowers that I'm playing with, my flower stems. So just put a big wad of liquid glue in there, put that little wax seal on, and then add the sentiment. And the sentiment is popped up with dimensionals. My final embellishment is some Color Essential Gems. These are Spectrum AB. And I thought they worked perfectly with this pretty little card. And this also has the semi-embossed background. And that's all, folks. Hope you enjoyed looking at some different ways to use your Better Plus plates. Everything I've used in today's video is listed underneath in the comments. There's also a link over to my blog where I give you a detailed description and all the cutting measurements to make all four of these cards today. And I will have some more shortly. 
And if you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and sharing my video with your friends. I really do appreciate it and it helps my viewing on my videos. So happy stamping, happy better pressing, and until next time, toodles!